Hey, baby. How you doing? Wait, what? What's up? I'm Tamarie, and if you couldn't tell by the title, I'm super fat again. Oh, you don't believe me? Boom, boom. Flap my wings. All right. Sorry you had to see that. Now you know. So you want to know when it really hit me, like in the face, with a brick? Yesterday. So I went to the YMCA with my brother, had been in eons, and, you know, before I even got to the workout room, I already had back sweat. TMI? Never. So I'm on a bike, doing my thing, you know, look around. Huh. Fattest chick in here. To be expected. But then I catch a glimpse of myself in that big old wall of mirrors, and that's when I just thought to myself, Oh man, I'm super fat again. Now don't get me wrong, I've always been some variety of fat, whether it be fat, super fat, or super duper fat. Now super duper fat could also be called morbidly obese. But that just sounds so depressing and irreversible. So for all my intents and purposes, it's super duper fat. And according to some random article I read, it's like 1 in 50 Americans are super duper fat. So I bet some of you watching right now are fatties, huh? You can't get offended. I'm fat, therefore I'm allowed to call you fat. It's in an unwritten fatty book. Well, I guess it's not a book since it's unwritten. And I just said it. Whatever. Anyways, we're all fat friends here. It's cool. So the reason that I want to like break down the negative wall surrounding hearing or saying the word fat is because, first of all, that's the go-to joke from any jerkwad, you know, that you come across. Especially if you're not ugly or stupid or drive a jalopy. Oh, you do drive a jalopy. Well, scratch the last one. But anyways, also, if you just get used to hearing or saying the word fat, then you can accept it. And with that acceptance, you can make affirmations. Like you can say, yeah, I'm fat, but I'm doing something about it. Now, if you're anything like myself and you gain weight in phases like I do, there are specific stages that you go through when you gain weight back. Now, first of all, it's not really that noticeable. You know, you just avoid scales at all costs. So you act like a vampire to a crucifix, basically, or whatever, or the other way around. Basically, you just avoid them at all costs, and you stay comfortably in denial, and you go on about your business. But then it's the fun phase. Phase two. That's when all your genes start to strangle you from your belly. And you try to make excuses to reassure yourself that you're not getting fat, like, oh my god, I must be totally bloated today. Or, man, those, those genes really shrunk in the dryer this time. Gotta break them bad boys in. You know the deal. But anyways, that's nothing compared to phase three. And phase three, that's when you just can't deny it. Welcome to Club Fat. That's when you put all your sexy clothes way in the back of the closet. And you say hello to your little friend, Mr. Elastic. And that's also the phase when loved ones, like, you know, mothers especially, they throw little hints at you and say little phrases like, so, uh... Starting to get a little weight, huh? You really gonna ask me if I notice two chins on my face where there used to be one? Come on now. But anyways, that's when you accept it. You're fat. That's that. Moving on. So, after all the hard work, after all the feeling great, after all the, you know, feelings of accomplishment, you're back to square one. Or, you know, maybe square two. You didn't have to gain it all back. But for me, not so long ago, I feel like I was at square zero. Like, I feel so bad about myself for gaining so much weight back, especially because I advocated for my weight loss plan so much. Like, every time I got a compliment from somebody, like, ooh, girl, you looking good, or, um, like, oh, you really trimming down, all of that. It just made my head swell so big that, like, I felt invincible. I felt like fat better not mess with me. But I was wrong. So very wrong. And just the more, I don't want to say conceited, but the more confident I was that I couldn't get fat again, when I did realize that I was super fat again, that's when it all just came crashing down. I got reclusive. 
I chose not to hang out with friends. I declined invites from family members to parties. If you're watching this, sorry about that. And I just really kept to myself. And what did I do for all this time I was being reclusive? I basically just smashed. I mean, I smashed. Like, when I first, I, it's like, I noticed I'm huge. So instead of doing something when I first noticed, no. I decided to smash. I mean, I probably ate enough in eight months to feed, like, a full family for a year. Like, I gained 100 pounds in eight months. And I know that is ludicrous. Like, for real, ludicrous. To gain that much weight. To let myself go that far from accomplishing, after accomplishing so much. But that's what happened. And, yeah. So after, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I really can't believe it. I can't believe I'm telling you guys because I barely even told my family yet. So anyways, after I went through all the denial and then after I went through my helpless and hopeless hermit stage, you know, <clears throat> there, there's a new phase. And what is that phase you may ask? Action phase. Now, action phase is up. That's the topic of next video. So, if you want to find out what the action phase is, and you think it can help you in some way, then subscribe to my channel, and let's keep in touch. Now, if you want to ask any questions, like, what was my initial weight loss plan, and how much did I lose, you know, just leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you want to know my relationship status. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, if you enjoyed yourself, click like and fave on this video or check out any of my other videos I've posted. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Thanks again. Peace out.